finished off setting up the inventory item and uh, carried through a purchase order to get quantity within the inventory in Dynamic 3i. And this allows us to carry into the next step, which is uh, entering a sales order for the item against a particular customer. Um, so we'll go into the order processing menu and start off with entering uh, an order and see how simple it is to carry an order through the cycle. When we get into the order entry, it's asking me for uh, the ship to and bill to, which are all the customers and the relationship uh, between uh, customers with respect to bill to's and ship to's uh, are all set up and defined in the customer master maintenance. I'm going to enter an order for one of my uh, favorite used customers and the system will default uh, to my warehouse location. It will also default the order type uh, that this customer usually is associated with. Uh, I can override it and, and, and change it to any uh, particular order that, uh, that can be handled by Dynamic 3i, uh, but we'll just leave it at the normal order. Uh, the system will ask me for a purchase order which is optional and uh, it actually can even have um, validation done on it to see that uh, or give me a warning if that uh, purchase order has already been used. Uh, this helps in uh, not keying in the same order again. Uh, for our purposes here it's set up to just require that a purchase order be entered and being multi warehouse dynamic 3i is asking me for the warehouse location that this particular order is going to go against. I'm going to override it and change it to a different warehouse location because I can place an order to a customer at any warehouse location and uh, as far as the uh, requirements for order entry are concerned that's uh, about it for the uh, for the header and I can go directly down to the detail level here and um, you see the order date defaults and the amount uh, is start tallying up my uh, my order across the bottom so the order item that we had set up I'll enter one for M3A the uh, quantity that we brought into the inventory or that's available at, at uh, this point in time directly uh, real time is uh, is a hundred and I can take uh, enter in an order quantity of for uh, we'll just take uh, we'll take ten of these and the system will go out and uh, it will say it's going to ship ten and there's no back orders if there wasn't enough available it would automatically calculate the back order it's gone out to the pricing file and pulled in uh, the 795 that we had set up uh, when we gave this inventory uh, defined this inventory item we gave it a cost we gave it a price that would go out the door uh, so the system automatically reads that and defaults the price in there. Uh, if there's any um, going across the detail line, this is it as far as uh, I could save the order right now. Any other information that I wanted to uh, put against this detail line, maybe a shipping method for the particular product, or if I wanted to override the expected ship date, if it was going to be out a couple of days uh, or, or over a couple of days, and the expected delivery date based on the inventory item, uh, it's going to be uh, expected on the 15th. Uh, based on uh, an expected ship date of the 12th. So there's certain uh, certain uh, parameters here that uh, that allow me to override that ship date or override the delivery date. Some other information that uh, continue across the detail line that might be useful is when the system was automatically, item was automatically set up for a uh, sales uh, to this customer. A salesman and district is associated with the, the customer. All this information gets tagged onto the uh, onto the detail line of the item, as well as the uh, the over uh, the or the underlying general ledger based on the reason code, and that has to do with the groupings and, and setups of uh, of the product groups associated with the uh, with the product, and that gives the uh, the umbrella of the general ledger and how it's going to post out the sales and where it's going to hit the GL with respect to this item being sold. Um, going back to just the plain simple uh, detail line. Uh, saving this will give us an order number uh, and we see order number 2317 gets assigned to this and there's a total dollar value of $79.50 for uh, 10 uh, at $7.95 and uh, that's uh, that's the order entered in the system. Now the next step is to basically go through and do a shipping confirmation right off the bat directly from this order I don't have to go back out to the menu I can issue a packing slip uh, this uh, button became available as soon as the order was committed to the database so 2317 if I print the packing slip here now what this uh, does is automatically call out the packing slip print which could be uh, uh, done to a screen or a, a printer in the inventory uh, warehouse uh, location so that that can uses the pick slip and the packing slip to go out uh, against the order uh, we'll just run this uh, directly here it can be printed or reprinted the uh, order is defaulted in here 
and we're going to run it to screen and we'll get a, uh, a packing list that can be uh, printed for order number 2317. And that's generated on the system and uh, can be used to uh, be shipped out with the item. So when that finishes and completed, we come back to the order and uh, we're basically ready at the next stage to uh, go and do a shipping confirmation of this item. Uh, in the menu here, the sequence of events, uh, we organized it so that uh, it's basically the steps involved in entering an order, just like likewise with inventory uh, in purchasing, entering a purchase order, etc. We can do a packing slip print. We did that from the online uh, button on the order entry. Uh, optional do customer label prints uh, ultimately you're going to get down into here for uh, do an invoice print a journal uh, which hits the general ledger and then an update which uh, puts it into the receivable side when we uh, do an order entry shipping confirmation that screen again is very simple it automatically goes into query mode we can query up 2317 and we actually have it retrieved and the system again is assumes that I'm going to ship everything out so it automatically defaults all the information it defaults the detail line to a ship quantity of 10 and in the same manner on the purchasing side uh, we can finalize this I I'm going to uh, I do not want to see this as an outstanding order for shipment I'm shipping the whole thing so I can final I'll flag it and close it off um, or I can simply just call this up and once I hit save, it goes from a printed status to an actual ship confirmed. So as far as the system is concerned, uh, my inventory warehouse has shipped this item out. It's ready to go. Um, the information that carries off here uh, on this screen, the ship to information, in case the uh, shipping was going to a different location, even though it could be the same customer, you can override this information. The bill to information is captured here with respect to uh, who the bill person is and, and the terms that they are associated with. Uh, and any specific, specific uh, header information required for the order like special instructions or whether it was uh, uh, freight paid and stuff like that in, and even in the case of the number of labels that were associated with the, uh, with the item for the optional packing sub, uh, label print. Uh, once this is shipped out uh, it's ready to be uh, invoiced. Um, there's optional bill of lading and export confirmation for those type of orders but ultimately we're going to carry this order through uh, into the receivable side and we want to print the invoice. So we'll do an invoice run for uh, all warehouses and all branches uh, by leaving them blank and doing a print it will process all the orders that are available to have the invoice generated. So once we run this here for an invoice date of today we will actually see um, uh, our order come up and we can see the invoiced orders for December 12th and the system will produce to here and there's our order for um, the sorry there's a couple of orders in here and because we did all of them there is our order there for the microfiber cloth for 79.50 um, it has now been assigned uh, not only do we have the order number 2317 we also have an invoice number um, that we can now track on the receivable side for uh, Robert Creeks and that is how simple it is to carry an order through the uh, the order cycle um, the last two steps that would be done was actually turned into uh, would be to journalize this uh, again we'll do this for all and we'll print it and this will show us the uh, GL postings that are going to occur for that particular order and those other orders that were invoiced there. Um, so we have the invoice um, 97 uh, and uh, order number 2317. These are the dollar values and then when we run the invoice update to get it into the receivable this gives me the general ledger posting for this period. Again I'll do a detail postings and run it for everything and it will take everything that's available to be posted and process and then we'll see our current processing order there's 2317 come up in the window there and we'll see the postings that that's going to um, be done at the GL level uh, with respect to the definitions of the reason codes and the product groups and the item that was uh, that was ordered on the order and there's the 7950 going to the accounts receivable and hitting the uh, certain cost of the inventory item um, and the hitting their sales for uh, for 79.50. So this is the general ledger side that's being done behind the scenes. Now that we've done that, 
that order is now turned over to our financials receivable function for, for the customer.